Again, as always, it is good to see everyone out, especially our visitors. Good to see Sister Bowling with us tonight. I'm glad she's able to be out and to be with us. If you notice Kay's not here tonight, I mentioned in class this morning that she thought she's fighting a kidney stone. And she said that this is what she told me. Now, whether she'll follow through or not, you're going to have to help me out with this. She said if it doesn't get better in two or three days, she'll go to the doctor. So in two or three days, if it's not better, I'm going to need some help tying her down and taking her to the doctor. But she went home after we ate lunch, and she's been on the heating pad and took a pain pill, so she would not be of much value tonight because she would be out of it. But I hope she feels better and I ask you that you remember her in your prayers as you go through your day. If you have your Bible tonight, if you'll turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 and verse 20. I think Paul cheated, and these are not the same songs that he had sent me due to the fact we couldn't use the projector, so I think he looked at the bulletin and saw the title, and he picked a couple of songs that really deal with what we want to talk about tonight. Uh, Sunshine in my soul and count your blessings. Notice what Paul writes here in this verse, in these two verses. He says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. How many of you, while you're watching television or maybe you're in your car and you're listening to the radio, you have heard a commercial to expand your closet space. There is a multi-billion dollar industry in our country that has a focus on utilizing your closet and making it where it has room for more junk. And I don't know any other way to put that, but when I think about seeing that commercial or hearing that, closet organizers, and on and on you go. I think about how much stuff we really have. And I think to myself sometimes, and hopefully you will remember the scripture that illustrates that wanting bigger and bigger is not a good thing. You remember the foolish farmer who had the abundant crop. And what did he want to do? He wanted to tear down his barns and build bigger barns so he would have more room to store his stuff. And we see at the end of that parable that Jesus says that he was a fool. And ask the question, when you die, whose stuff is that going to be? If you watch much television like I do, maybe you watch American Pickers or you watch some of those other shows. And they're always going about the country and it amazes me how much junk people have. And how much stuff that people collect that really sometimes it has no meaning but I have it so I want to keep it. And we see it over and over again. There's no doubt in my mind in our life that we are blessed with an abundance of physical possessions. Amen. Questions. How many of you this week went without food? How many of you went hungry this week? Or maybe I ought to ask you, how many of you went through your refrigerator and threw away some of that uneaten food that you had left over? How many of you went around with raggedy clothes this week? Or did you have trouble deciding what to wear out of the closet that I hear all the time of, I have nothing to wear? How many of you have adequate transportation? How many of you, through the course of this week, were able to jump in one of the two or three or four or five different vehicles that you own and were able to drive and get to where you wanted to go. 
How many of you have adequate living space? Or in our mind, we need a bigger space. How many of you, like our forefathers, <laughs> slept in a house with no heat or no cooling? See, we have all the comforts of life, don't we? Would you agree that we are abundantly blessed in our life? Amen. And as Darrell says in his prayers, or even before he, the contribution this morning, the poorest of our poor have more than many throughout this world. But brother, that's not what tonight's lesson is going to be about. I want you to understand that we have this abundant blessing in the physical side. But I want us to really consider counting our blessings or realizing that sunshine that should exist in our soul because we have such great spiritual abundance. And what my hope and what my prayer is is that our spiritual abundance far, far, far outweighs the physical abundance that we have. And so I want to share with you five areas, I think it is tonight, in which we have a great blessing in abundance. First of all, we are blessed with an abundant joy. If you go back into the Old Testament, to the book of Psalms, in two different passages there, first of all, in Psalm 38 and verse 6, the psalmist says, they shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. And then I'll jump over to Psalm 85 and look at verse 12. Where it says there, Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield her increase. You might be thinking, Brother Ray, one of those two passages Sunday. <laughs> Well, if you go back and you look at the history of the children of Israel, the people of that day, in their mind, they saw those physical blessings as proof of God's love. And it also showed their faithful dependence upon God Himself. You see, the harvest was good because the people were good to God. Or, when you think about a poor harvest, it meant to the people of Israel that maybe they weren't as good to God or as faithful to God as they should be. And so the psalmist is using that ideology comparing this abundance that they have. What he was showing was that God is full of goodness and that God would providentially care for His people. But think about us as Christians today. What about us and our abundant joy? You and I have this abundant joy, not only in the physical sense, but we need to understand that we have abundant joy more so in a spiritual sense. Remember John as he's writing in 1 John chapter 1 and in verse 4, John says that these things write I unto you that your joy may be full. What was John trying to convey? What was the message John is going to convey in the book of 1 John? He's going to convey the message that we can have fellowship with God, that we can walk in the light as He is in the light, that we can have our sins forgiven if we are faithful and just to confess our sins. It is in that spiritual sense that we have this abundant joy, the joy in knowing that our sins can, are forgiven. Or the joy in knowing that others can be faithful to God. We are blessed with an abundant joy spiritually. And secondly tonight, we are also blessed with abundant life. And I mentioned this this morning from John chapter 10 and verse 10, where John says the thief comes not to steal and not to kill and to destroy. Or comes but for to steal, to kill and destroy. And then Jesus says, I am come that they might have life and that it might be more abundant. 
Think about the abundant life that Jesus is bringing. Think about the abundant life that he has brought to us. It is abundant in quantity, brethren. Jesus has given us what we need, but he's given us really more than we need. He has gone above and beyond what we need in this life to have this abundant life, this abundant joy in life. He's given us this, this abundance as it is related and illustrated in our relationships. Think about the church. Think about the relationship that we have as members of the body of Christ. That we can lean and help and depend one upon another. That we have the relationship with God and with Christ and with the Holy Spirit that was planned from the beginning of time. That we can be living in an acceptable manner in that. You see, the abundance that He gives us in this life is continuous. The abundance will not end. Unless, and I'll throw the caveat out there, that abundance of life will not end until we sever the relationship. When we make the choice to step away from the relationship with the church and we step away from our relationship with God, we are severing the abundance of this life. But number three tonight, we are blessed with abundant grace. Turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Look at verse 8 down through verse 11. <clears throat> Paul writing says these words, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, He is dispersed abroad. He is given to the poor. His righteousness remains forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have shown, sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Why are we blessed? Why are we blessed with abundant grace? Did you catch what it says? We are blessed in that manner so that we can be a blessing to others. We have been given a gift, grace. It is our responsibility to share the grace of God with those who are around us. We've been blessed to be able to bless others. But then jump back to Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, verse 20 and verse 21, again, Paul, recording the words through inspiration, says this. He says, Moreover, the law entered that offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Are we sinful? Do we sin? Do we fall short of what God wants us to be? Absolutely we do. But guess what? God's grace is greater than our sin. We hear people all the time say, but brother, I, I hear it all the time, Brother Ray, I have sinned such a great sin. God can't forgive me. Have you heard that before? My sin is so great, I know God can't forgive me. They need to read what Paul wrote in Romans. God's grace is greater than all our sin. Don't we sing a song about that? Grace greater than all our sin is the name of the song. Brother, there is no sin that God will not forgive. 
with the exception of the one we don't ask forgiveness for. You see, His grace will cover us. And we think about this grace, the abundance of the grace. What a wonderful blessing that is to know that we have that in our spiritual life. But number four, we are blessed with abundant <coughs> power. In the early days of the church, they were blessed with a miraculous power. They had the ability to perform miracles, to do things to show and prove who they were. While today we don't have that miraculous power, we still have a power behind us. And the power we have is the power of God's written word to accomplish God's will. God has enabled all of us to be able to do what he has asked us to do. Someone says, but I'm afraid. You need to read what Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 7. Where these words are written, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. What kind of power has God given you? He's given you the power to love and to be able to understand His words so that what? You can be that blessing to someone else. The spirit of fear comes from Satan. It is Satan who says, you can't do that. But it is God who says, you can accomplish that. What did Paul say in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13? I think my memory says it there that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or another translation says I can do all things through Christ who gives me my strength. When I understand that my strength and my power comes from God, I understand that abundant power that is there. You see, the problem is for us, we try to do things on our own or through our own power. James tells us in James chapter 1 and verse 5 that if you lack wisdom, what should you do? The Bible says, let him ask of God. We lack wisdom. We lack understanding. We lack something. Let's ask God. And notice the second part of the verse says that gives to all men liberally. In other words, when we ask, what does God do? He gives us more abundant power. And when I think of this abundant power, it is a power that is greater than the need that I have. Let me illustrate this way. <coughs> I love my wife to death. We're going to have two people extra for dinner. She'll cook for 30. And then she wonders a week or two weeks later, why are we throwing all this away? And her attitude is, I would rather have too much than not enough. You see, that's what God gives us. He gives, gives us more than we need. And so when we understand that abundant power is there, you can do more than you think you can do. You see, you're only limited because you have the spirit of fear, not the spirit of power. But number five tonight, and maybe the greatest of the spiritual abundance that we have, is that we are blessed with that abundant entrance into heaven. That abundant interest in entrance into heaven. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 11, it says, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The idea that I see in that is that heaven is an overpowering gift. 
And what I mean by that is heaven is going to be more than you or I can even think or that we can imagine. Oh, but Brother Ray, I can turn to the book of Revelation and I can read the symbolism that is there and I can see the beauty of heaven. That doesn't even start to tell you what heaven is going to be like. It is painting a picture of heaven so that we will want to see and that we'll have the desire to enter into the beauty that exists there, but it's going to be far greater. A picture. They say is what? Worth a thousand words? Take any picture of some landmark. I've never been to the Grand Canyon before. I've seen pictures. And I think the Grand Canyon in pictures is a, a sight to behold such beauty. Any of y'all ever been there? Amen. Any of y'all ever seen pictures of the Grand Canyon before you went to visit? Will you agree that your visit to the Grand Canyon opens your eyes up to the reality of the beauty of the Grand Canyon and the pictures just don't do it justice? When we read the book of Revelation, the picture is painted, but it's going to be like going to the Grand Canyon and seeing it for ourselves when we see the beauty of heaven. That is the abundant entrance that you and I are looking for. And in order for us to enter into that abundant life in heaven, we are going to to have to endure the trials and the tribulations that this whole life throws at us. Because we have an understanding that the beauty of heaven far outweighs what this whole earth has to offer us. When we see what heaven has to offer, we will endure the things of this world. But now let me throw the disclaimer out to you. Turn over to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. And begin reading with me in verse 5. You want to make sure? Here we go. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Therefore, Brethren, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And then back to verse 11 that we looked at just a moment ago. You see, this is not just a gift that is given to everyone. The gift of eternal life, that abundant life, in heaven is not given to just everyone. It is there for those who are diligent to follow Him. To do the things, the Christian graces, and add and build upon these day by day in our life. It is for those who do not stumble at the cares of the world. It is given to those who become the mature Christian individual that God desires all man to be. Brethren, we have such spiritual abundance. The time that I have spent talking about these five things really doesn't do justice to how abundant we have the spiritual blessings. And we know, brethren, that if we want this spiritual abundance, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where do we begin to receive the abundance spiritually? We receive it when we accept Jesus for what he has done for us. When one will hear his word, develop that faith in the word, and be willing to repent of the sin that's in their life. Make a change in the way they live. 
to make the good confession that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and to be immersed with Him in the waters of baptism where our sin is washed away, we can begin to experience those spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and verse 27, as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Spiritual blessing is not coming unless you are in Christ. But let's follow that up with another verse that we're all familiar with. Matthew 6, verse 33. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, what does he say? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When I look back and I see that verse, I see that that verse tells me not only do I need to be in Christ, but that I must continue in Christ. Seek first will mean I will put Christ above all else in my life. Perhaps there's one here tonight that you've allowed the cares of the world to push Christ back out of your life. If you need to come home tonight repenting of sin, again, changing the way you live, changing the way that you're living right now, Stop living the way of the world and begin to live the way of God. Confess your sin. Will you let your brethren pray with you, pray for you? Because if you're not living the way you should, the spiritual abundance that so many of us enjoy are not going to be enjoyed by you. Spiritual abundance only can be enjoyed by those who are in Christ. Tonight, if you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, our prayers should come while we stand. Why we say God